hi everybody. It's so good to be with you. My name is Sam Vagar, he, him, his. I'm up here in Boston. I wanted to use our time together first and foremost to build on the question Spud asked you about something you want to accomplish in your life. Uh, I want to ask you, what is a cause that you care about and why? What is a cause that you care about and why? Whether it's mental health advocacy or climate change or racial justice, what is a cause that you care about and why? The reason why I love asking this question is um, really just getting a sense of, you know, what it is that's in your heart that speaks to you that you really care about. And uh, one of my goals, my North Star and everything is to help young people own your voices and power to make a difference. And at the heart of all that is really helping people, I think, understand what's in your own heart, what, what really drives you, what you're fully committed to. And, and I'm hoping that in sharing in these next 15 minutes, a little bit of the, of the story that has guided me in the last 13 years, that it may in some small way inspire or affirm your own journeys of social impact. Uh, so for me, this, this all began really when I was in high school. And when I was in high school, I was really shy. So to any introverts out there, shout out to you. I'm one as well. And I really didn't fit in. And I remember being in high school, being in the cafeteria, looking to my left, looking to my right, not really seeing anybody that I could sit down with. And so many lunches, I would actually go walk home and eat alone. So I really felt that sense of loneliness in high school. My senior year, I had no dates all four years of high school. My senior year, we had prom. I was too shy to ask the person that I wanted to ask. So my friend set me up with somebody else. And so that was really my high school experience. I applied to a bunch of colleges and most of them rejected me. So <laughs> at this point, maybe you're wondering like, why did Spud invite Sam to do, to come talk to us today? But that was really my, my high school experience and then into undergrad. And in undergrad at college, uh, I read two books that really changed my life. So for any of you who come into this masterclass today saying, well, how can this really help me in any way? You never know what conversation or book or class may stick and may actually shift the trajectory of your life it happened for me. And for me, it was reading two books. One was a book I recommend to everybody, Mountains Beyond Mountains. Mountains Beyond Mountains tells the story of a doctor named Paul Farmer and an organization Partners in Health. And then I read the book, The End of Poverty by the economist Jeff Sachs. <clears throat> and I learned that over 700 million people on the planet live on less than $1.90 a day in extreme poverty. And so I didn't know what I could do but I was a sophomore at Brandeis University and I knew I wanted to do something. So I picked up the, the phone, cold called this uh, famous economist, Jeff Sachs, went down to Columbia University two days later, met with his team. I said, look, I'm 19 years old. I don't have many answers yet, but I know our generation can do more. I know we can do more to tackle extreme poverty and advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And so I want to figure out what we can do as students. Came back to campus, started small scale public health fundraisers. So if any of you have ever hosted a bake sale or if you're doing virtual fundraisers now during COVID, a small scale events we were doing, but in the fall of 2007, convened students from all across the city of Boston. And we said, look, we're all focused on making a difference. We're all focused on, on injustice in the world, but, but we're doing this work in silos. Yeah. <clears throat> Those silos minimize impact minimize the fusion of knowledge. What would happen if we collaborated? And six months later, we had our first summit at MIT. A thousand student leaders showed up from around the world with Paul Farmer, Jeff Sachs, John Legend, the head of USAID. And Paul, Jeff, and John joined our board of advisors. They said, we're in, Sam. Let's, let's help you build this student network tackling poverty. I said, I'm 20 years old. I'm not sure what we're doing yet, but let's give it a shot. And so we launched Millennium Campus Network MCN as a platform for undergraduates making a difference. We launched it in our campus dorm rooms. We had no funding. We had no, no clue quite yet what we might do. But what we really launched was principally a program called the Millennium Fellowship. 
and we focused on training connections and credentials. We said, look, if we help provide training connections, credentials to undergraduates making a difference, they can go on, you can go on to have impact, deeper impact in community and launch into careers with purpose. And the first year that we ran this program, the Millennium Fellowship, we had 15 students apply. So for any of you who've been volunteering or part of a student club or organization, you know, you're so passionate about it and you look around and maybe there's only five or six other students who care or less than that even. And you're, you're kind of wondering to yourself, is this even worth my time? And the recognition that I had was, you know, even if only 15 people want to be a part of something, those 15 people really matter. And so we really focused on building trust, building, I love this term, feedback loops. Like I'm obsessed. I, I love feedback loops. So creating really tight feedback loops with people where you really listen to and learn from people and understand what their passions are. And so we launched this program, I'll put in the chat box called the Millennium Fellowship. Uh, and we launched it with just 15 applicants. The first year we had 11 Millennium Fellows, but we were really laser focused on adding value and really listening to and learning from these 15 young leaders. And this program grew from 15 applicants a year in 2013 to last year we had 15,000 applicants on 1,400 campuses. And we had 1,200 Millennium Fellows last year on 80 campuses, volunteered over 200,000 hours, positively impacted more than 800,000 people, people's lives in 15 countries around the world. And so I definitely want to invite you to, to check out the website to apply by April 16th. It's entirely free. And it also provides a certificate from United Nations Academic Impact and MCN for the work that you're doing. For me, the, the key learning in this was how much student leaders are, are already doing. And, and I don't have to tell you that so many of you are millennials and in Gen Z. And when I, when I mention people like Greta or Malala or Amanda, I don't even have to share who I'm talking about or more context. You know exactly who I'm talking about. And so for us, that recognition was so powerful because we didn't really need to inspire young people to do more. We just needed to support what young people are already doing. So whether it's at Alma College, student leaders who are tackling food insecurity, they, they created an aquaponics farm. So this aquaponics farm produced 400 heads of lettuce, 50 pounds of fish. They then sold it to local, local supermarkets and then provided it also to food pantries locally or student leaders at the University of Benin in Nigeria who are leveraging solar power to provide electricity to 106 community members each night. These are small scale projects. And I think one of the challenges is when you're doing a small scale project, you feel like, oh, I'm the only one, right? Like I'm the, the only one that matters. And the power of being in networks is you suddenly realize, wow, there are hundreds or even thousands of other young people who share my passions and my interests, and they share the passions for the causes I care about. And so that's really what we've become is a community of practice where student leaders across organizations across the world are now learning together on campus and virtually. And, and so what I wanted to do with really with these 10 minutes is share some of the learnings that I've had over these last 13 years that I hope can inspire your own social impact journeys, because as hard as it is to really catalyze social change, there's also so much power that you have. Sitting here right now, you have so much power. And for many of you, you have, you know, 15, 20, 25 years of lived experience. There's so much that you bring to the table. And so for me, I want to take you on a piece of my journey that I hope will, will really inspire or even more so affirm what you're already doing. So for me, the first key lesson came when I was 18 years old. I was walking along the street in the bitter cold in Washington, DC in January, 2005. And I came across a man who was homeless. And normally I'd been conditioned growing up to ignore people who were homeless. And in this instance, I did something different. I sat down for 45 minutes and this man and I shared lunch and about 20 minutes into the conversation, I kind of sheepishly asked this man, I said, you know, how do you survive? 
how do you survive? And this man looked back at me and he said, I'm not afraid uh, to ask for help. I'm not afraid to look up at those above me and ask for help. Never be afraid to talk to anyone. Never be afraid to talk to anyone. And that single piece of advice, never be afraid to talk to anyone. It's, it's the single best piece of advice I received in my life. And it didn't come from a class. It didn't come from a world leader or anybody else. It came from someone who was homeless. And so I share that because I would challenge and encourage you if you're not already doing it, I'm sure many of you are, but look to build your networks in, in really unconventional places because society may tell you that some people are less than, are less valuable, are even a drain on society, and they couldn't be more wrong. This man who is homeless changed my life and is in large part why I'm able to sit here doing what I'm doing today and sharing this knowledge that I, that I learned from him with you. I then took that piece of advice, never be afraid to talk to anyone. And I tried to actually put it into practice, which was hard for me as an introvert and somebody who is shy. But I said to myself, look, if I'm going to try and get out of my comfort zone for anything, I really want to try and do that for the causes that I care about. And so if, if I can help mobilize students in tackling extreme poverty and advancing the sustainable development goals, then let me give it a shot. And so in 2010, I was at a conference, a CGIU in Miami, and I, I came across an actor, act, <coughs> activist named Cal Penn, who some of you may know from a movie, The Namesake, but he's more popularly known for Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And um, I came across Cal and he was get, about to go up on stage and everyone else was kind of too shy to go say hi to him. And I just thought to myself, never be afraid to talk to anyone, make the most of an opportunity. And, and so I went up and I introduced myself. I reached out. I said, hey, I'm Sam Vagar from Boston. I run a network MCN. We work with Millennium Fellows on campuses making a difference. And, and Cal pulled out his card. And one thing I learned is, you know, if you've got a card, always ask, always ask for somebody's card if you've got one and offer yours as well, but always ask you know, have the courage if you can to ask for somebody else's contact information. And then when you get that contact information, a uh, spud reminded me of this earlier, you know, follow up within 24 hours. If somebody, something says really resonates, follow up within 24 hours, because it, it's really most sticky in the, in that first 24 hours. So really make a commitment to doing that. And so I did that and Cal invited me. He had left Hollywood to work for president Obama in the white house. And so he said, if you want to come connect further, you know, I, I'm happy to invite you to come down to DC. So I had no plans to be in DC, but I, I was like, oh, Cal, I'm going to be in DC in two weeks. I quickly booked a flight to DC. Uh, I had no plans. I quickly made it up just so I could get down there, met with one of Cal's colleagues, and then we kept in touch. And over the next 10 months, I kept asking a simple question. It's five magic words. It's a simple question that you can ask in any conversation. In any conversation, you can ask this simple question and it can really equalize a relationship and a partnership. And I share this, that you should ask this question because so often as young people, we come into a conversation and we say, well, look, you know, <clears throat> I, I need something. I need an internship or I need a job or I need funding, whatever it is. But you also have so much to offer. And by asking this simple question, you can really change the dynamic of a conversation. Does anyone want to take a guess? I would invite you, if you want to take a guess on what the simple question is, to put that, it's five magic words. It's one simple question you can ask in any conversation, uh, in a business meeting, in a meeting where you're trying to get funding for your student club, whatever it might be. It's, it's a simple question you can ask to really build a relationship and show that you care about the other person. Does anyone want to, I, I, a million gold stars and bonus points for somebody who wants to take a guess in the chat box, what that question might be. And yes, but you're right. There you go. A lot, lot of great questions here. So these are all basically exactly in the same vein. And I will give a shout out to Brandon and to Cosette and I mean, all of you and Matthew, I mean, all of these questions honestly are, are right on Nick as well, Adam. I mean, you're all, you're all right there. Yes. A bunch of gold stars. The question that you, that I asked Ron Cordes, the Cordes foundation taught me to ask. It, it's so powerful. It is, how can I help you? How can I help you? 
because it really shows that you care about the other person, their agenda, their priorities. And so for 10 months, I asked Cal, you know, every couple months I reached out, hey, Cal, how can I help you on, on your White House initiatives, on youth engagement, how can I help you? And for 10 months, Cal was like, we're good, we're good, we're good. And then in the 10th month, Cal said, you know what? We actually have this initiative called White House Youth Roundtables. We want to know what young Americans care about. I said, fantastic. We organize, we organize groups just like this around the country with Millennium Fellows. And Cal then invited us to a debrief meeting at the White House. We went. If any of you have been, it's actually really small in there. And um, coming into the White House, I knew my third piece of advice. So never be afraid to talk to anyone. Always ask, how can I help you? And then three, know what you want out of every meeting. Know what you want out of every meeting. And your goals can be malleable, of course, but your time is so precious. And so be thinking, even with a session like this, you know, what do I want out of this? Is it some new learning? Is it a new relationship, a professional connection? Whatever it is, really think with intention about how you're going to use your time. And so I came into this meeting with the White House. I said, well, if, if President Obama shows up, I really want to make the most of it. I had handwritten notes for the president and the first lady about the work we were doing and went in, went into the West Wing, into the Roosevelt Room, sat around a table. Halfway through the meeting, this side door opens up. President Obama walks in. We're all in shock. But, but I was prepared. And so when he came around to shake our hands, I reached out, I said, Mr. President, I'm Sam Vagar from Boston, Massachusetts. And I whipped out these two notes and I said, these are for you. And he kind of looked down perplexed. Secret Service probably hated me, but I didn't care because never be afraid to talk to anyone. Make the most of every opportunity, right? Come into these meetings prepared, whatever they may be. And so the president sat down across the table, shared why it's so important to make a difference starting when you're young. And when he was wrapping up, I raised my hand. I raised my hand. I said, you know, thank you for your leadership. Whatever people's politics are, Republican, Democrat, Independent, your leadership is a bold statement. And I said, those notes are an invitation to get involved in our work at MCN. Everybody in the room laughed at me. They all thought this is ridiculous. You're pitching the president. A month later, they said, hey, you know, Sam, we want you to come and share what you're doing, your work in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we went in 2011, then Morocco 2013, then Bulgaria and Mas North Macedonia 2015. It's helped us grow MCN and the Millennium Fellowship all around the world. And so we had the courage in that moment, right, with President Obama, but that never would have happened if we didn't have the courage to then reach out to and build relationship with Cal Penn. And that wouldn't have happened if I didn't meet a homeless man who taught me to never be afraid to talk to anyone who taught me somebody who's an introvert and shy and never be afraid to talk to anyone. So as you think about building your professional network, as you think about having global impact, one global impact is really, all of it is still all local at the end of the day. It's about relationships. Networking is really about building and cultivating relationships. So these three things, never be afraid to talk to anyone. Always be asking, how can I help you? Be supportive of, of others, however you can be. And then three, know what you want out of every meeting. If you apply these three things, it's really changed my life, the course of my life over 13 years. I'm just really grateful to each of you for all the causes you shared at the beginning, because just like you, I know that this generation has that power within it to do so much more of what the world needs. And I'm grateful for what you're going to be doing over the next five, six decades, and really just grateful to be in community with you.